the Toulouse gunman suspected of killing seven people has now been confirmed dead. In just the past hour, police stormed Mohamed Meraz flat where he had been holed up for the past two days. The interior minister said a fire fight ensued. The suspect was hiding in the bathroom. He shot at police, then jumped out of the window while still shooting. Three policemen have been reportedly injured in the final assault. Now, let's talk to Paris-based political writer uh, Diana Johnstone. Good to see you. Uh, a pleasure to have you on RT today. Uh, the police waited for almost two days in the hope of capturing the suspect alive. Now he's confirmed dead in a gunfight with police. Do you think they were right to wait so long? I really can't uh, second-guess that. I, I'm not going to criticize the French because I'm an American, and in the United States they would have probably have bombed the whole neighborhood. So uh, I, I, I uh, sympathize with their uh, de uh, declared desire to capture him alive, but it uh, didn't work. <laughs> I mean, so this is not a great success, and uh, the whole operation is not a great success for the police. But do you think, do you think though, uh, with, the in, with the influx of, of uh, radical fundamentalism in, in France, certainly since the uh, uprising in Libya and just parts of North Africa, many immigrants have been flooding into France. Could this have maybe painted a lesson to those who might have radical ideas if indeed the French intelligence, intelligence authorities had gone into the house immediately instead of waiting for 48 hours? Send a lesson to his comrades. Well, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't really believe in this sort of lesson. I, I, don't, I, I don't think that sort of work, works. I mean, you, you, when somebody commits murders, uh, the police have to try to catch him, and of course you want to deter other people. But, you know, I, I want to make a point while I'm on here. Uh, I, I think it's very important psychologically to compare this event with what happened eight years ago in Madrid, remember? Um, the train bombing where uh, 191 people were killed and um, nearly 2,000 wounded. I mean, it was a much larger terrorist operation and it was also just before an election. And what is very interesting is that the reaction of the Spanish people to that was, uh, in fact, to put out the right-wing government and bring in the socialist government because impl and immediately stop their um, participation in the war in Afghanistan. And I think that meant that the Spanish implicitly recognized that this was, in fact, um, a... a, 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 um, a coming home to roost, a chickens coming home to roost operation, that this was in, as this uh, So uh, as, you, as you're implying, as you're implying, I do apologize for interrupting, but perhaps you reap what you sow. Uh, but I need to ask you about fi finding a fine balance here, because... Uh, yes, the, the but I mean, the French aren't going to interpret it that way. I want to make a French that the Spanish saw that right away and interpreted that way. But that's not the way it's going to be uh, interpreted here for political reasons. Well, you, you, you bring up the issue of political reasons. Certainly, uh, President Sarkozy uh, campaigning for hopeful re-election on his part. He's been discussing quite a lot of hard-right anti-immigration sentiment. Uh, how does that tie now into what's happened with this gunman in Toulouse? Do you think he might step back a bit or even use that to his advantage? Well, uh, the thing is, he's already used it to his advantage because he's completely uh, dominated the television screens for a couple of days uh, as a result of this and shoved the other candidates into the into the shadows at, at a time when this was supposed to be the beginning of the campaign so as a matter of fact uh, Sarkozy just by being present everywhere has has already profited from this all right, now let's, uh, let's talk about it. You, you mentioned a moment ago about foreign campaigns, uh, whether it's Spain or, or France here. Uh, the suspected gunman uh, claimed to have links to al-Qaeda. Uh, he had been trained in Afghanistan, trained in Pakistan, but he is a French citizen. Do, do, do you think homegrown terror in France, I mean, is it a big problem, do you think? I don't think it's a big problem. Uh, the only person who thinks it's a big problem, uh, uh, the only campaigner was uh, Marine Le Pen, uh, uh, this might help her slightly. I really, I, I, I can't predict about that. It, it, all of the candidates, other than that, were hoping, this is very interesting, when the first killings took place, actually, I thought right away that it was exactly what it was, that it was the chickens come home to roost things. Uh, 
But the the general reaction of the politicians was to think, oh, this is racism. Oh, dear. And so they all went making big statements about how they were against right-wing racism. And that wasn't it at all. But that's what they would have liked it to be because they love to make speeches against um, right-wing uh, uh, racism. This is embarrassing to them because they don't want to alienate uh, the Muslim community, um, which is quite large here. Uh, and so they're making the distinction that this is not the same. And of course, it isn't the same. So perhaps, but there I, so, are... so you're perhaps saying that there's a vast generalization going on here, that ultimately it's easy to stereotype the, the Muslim population when it comes to one bout of, of radicalism. Uh, Diana Johnson, as we've been talking to you, we've been looking at live pictures on RT uh, as the police continue uh, to ultimately clear up the cordoned off area. Uh, we can see the security forces there as well, uh, the ambulance to the left, other security personnel. Uh, whatever the case, though, it's two-day gun siege comes to an end. Uh, Diana Johnston, a political writer, thank you for joining us on RT today.